another video. So today we're going to be going over children's python care. So first I'm just going to go over like their size and temper and just a few things that are good to know about them if you decide you want to get one. Then we'll go into lighting, temperature, and humidity, enclosure size and how to set one up, handling, feeding, and finally where to get children's pythons and how much they cost. So the first thing you may be wondering is how big these guys get. And they're actually a fairly small size which makes them very easy to accommodate and house correctly. So these guys typically only get about three feet long. Sometimes females will get slightly larger. Sometimes males will stay a little bit smaller, but they're gonna stay around three feet. Next thing is their temper. And luckily these guys are fantastic. They're super relaxed, very easy to work with. They're great for beginners. And they're not gonna be overly stressful to handle. They're very tolerant of it. They're not difficult at all, very docile, and would highly recommend them to anyone. The next thing to keep in mind would be that these guys are nocturnal, meaning they're gonna be awake at night and asleep in the daytime so you're not going to see them a whole lot unless you get them out. To some people that's not a big deal but others like to be able to see their reptiles throughout the day without handling them. So that's just something to keep in mind if you want an animal that you're going to be seeing a lot and more of a display animal. You guys might not be the right thing for you just because they're nocturnal. Another good thing about these guys is they are terrestrial meaning they're ground dwelling so you're not going to need an overly tall enclosure. Because these guys are only about three feet long, they're not going to take up a lot of space in general, so they're going to be very easy to accommodate and they're not going to crowd up your space. And the last sort of basic fact to think about would be their lifespan. These guys have a lifespan of about 30 to 35 years, so despite that small size, they're still quite a commitment. So just keep that in mind before purchasing one and make sure you're prepared to keep them for their entire lifespan. As you should with any animal, it's best if they're not being transferred from home to home, so be prepared to keep them for that 30 to 35 years. Now when it comes to lighting, these guys actually don't need any. I use an LED light with her just to make the enclosure look nicer and light it up a little bit for that day and night cycle, but it's not necessary. If you want to, you can use a UVB light, but again, it's not necessary. Just if you have live plants or something, it might be a good idea, but the snake itself does not need it. And again, because they're nocturnal, they're not going to require a basking spot, and that would just dry out your enclosure. So lighting is not necessary. If you want to use UVB or LED lighting, you're welcome to, but again, they don't need it and they'll be fine either way, assuming they're being kept in a room that is fairly well lit and will provide that natural day and night cycle. Now when it comes to heating, you have a couple different options. If you're keeping them in something like a PVC enclosure, you are more than welcome to use a radiant heat panel. Or if you're keeping them in a glass tank like I do, or even a plastic bin, you can use a heat mat. Whatever you use, just make sure the warm side of their enclosure gets to about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to provide your snake the opportunity to thermoregulate like they need to, and also digest their food and stimulate their metabolism. Just overall, keep them healthier and happier. When it comes to humidity, these guys need anywhere from 60 to 80%, and you can accomplish this by misting the enclosure once to twice a day and also using a substrate that retains humidity. If you're only going to be misting once a day, I would recommend doing it at night because they're nocturnal, they're going to benefit more from it that way. But if you need to do it twice, you can do morning and evening. Personally, I keep my girl at about 70 to 75% humidity and that seems to work very well. She hasn't had any issues with shedding or eating or doing anything like that. So that's where I keep her, but it depends on your individual snake and what they seem to do best with. Now when it comes to enclosures, you can comfortably house an adult in a 40 gallon glass terrarium or a similarly sized plastic tub. Either one works. If you want to know more about the pros and cons of housing them in either one, you can go watch my other video where I go over all of those. I'll link it down below, but just make sure they have enough space to stretch out along one side of the enclosure. If you want to go bigger, you're more than welcome to. They will probably use it, but just as long as they've got that space, they'll be perfectly happy. Now when it comes to setting up their enclosures, I'm going to show you mine in just a second and also if you want to see the video where I upgraded her into this enclosure, you can go watch that. I will also link that down below. But when it comes to setting them up, you want to start with first a substrate layer that will hold humidity. I use a combination of an organic planting soil and peat moss that I get at Lowe's. I buy it there because it's a lot cheaper than getting reptile substrate. If you decide to do that though, just make sure you check the ingredients and there's no added fertilizers or chemicals that could be harmful to your snakes. But as long as they have a substrate that retains humidity, you should be good to go. Next thing is you're going to want to make sure they have a hideout on the warm end and on the cool end, and their water dish should also be on the cool end. The reason you don't want to place this on the warm end is because the heat will cause algae growth and also just cause the water to evaporate faster, so make sure you keep that on the cool side of the enclosure. Now as long as you've got those basic things covered, the rest of the enclosure setup is up to you. So pretty much just have fun with it. They'll definitely utilize things to climb on, such as branches. 
Even though they're terrestrial, they do benefit from that. Then things like plants, cork bark, grapevine, spiderwood, driftwood, anything like that, they'll definitely utilize it, so it's a great idea to offer it to them. Not to mention it just makes your enclosure look a lot better when you've got a bunch of things in there to help fill it out. Now when it comes to handling, these guys are fantastic. They're very docile, very relaxed. They're great for beginners or children. So that sounded like a pun and it was not. So this is my children's pythons enclosure. As you can see, she has her warm hideout over here. She's got a lot of plants and branches to hang out on. Plants to hide out under over here, her water dish. If you guys wanna know how to make a naturalistic background like that one, or just see the full setup of this enclosure, you can go watch my other video. I'll link it down below. And with that being said, let's continue on with the rest of their care. Now when it comes to handling, these guys are very docile. They're very relaxed and easy to handle. They're great for beginners or kids. So they're definitely a great snake if you want something that you can handle a lot and that you don't have to worry about biting you or just getting stressed out or being flighty. So as far as that goes, I would definitely recommend these guys to anyone of any experience level. Now when it comes to feeding, adults can easily handle large mice or small rats. and You'll be wanting to feed them every 7 to 10 days. If you have them on small rats, chances are you're going to want to do every 10 days so they don't get too heavy. If you have them on large mice, they'll probably be able to do once a week and be just fine. Juveniles are obviously going to need smaller rodents depending on what size they are and you'll just gradually increase that size as they get older. Now the last thing is where to get children's pythons and I would recommend buying from a reputable breeder. I bought her from Brandon Turner with BMT Reptiles and that was a fantastic experience. I would definitely recommend buying from him again. He was very easy to work with, responded to all of my emails, answered any questions, which is overall very helpful, very responsible breeder. You can check him out on Instagram at BMT Reptiles, or if you want to find another breeder, you can go to morphmarket.com and just search children's pythons. Plenty of other breeders sell through there, just make sure you go to their site and check their reviews to make sure they're a reputable breeder. Now when it comes to price, you can expect to spend anywhere from $100 to $150. However, if you order them online and get them shipped to you, you will have a minimum of about $50 to $75 shipping. However, it is completely worth it to get them shipped to you safely and overnight along with whatever heat packs or cool packs they need, along with insulation, just all of that to make sure that they arrive safely. And with that being said, that wraps up today's video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also jump on over to Reptile Rave on Instagram and give me a follow there if you don't mind. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.